Uh, good morning, friends. So, in uh, this specific video, I'm going to discuss uh, an important concept of page events in ASP.NET. So, if we talk about different levels, there are basically two specific things we can say that there are some events like uh, application events that occur uh, throughout the whole application. And there are some page events, they only work on a specific page. So if you're talking about application, then the whole website or whole web application or desktop application that you have created, they will work on that one. They will, they will completely affect the whole application. But if you are talking about page events, then they are only going to affect the specific page that currently being displayed or that currently being loaded into the memory. So different uh, events that are there that, that we can call the other page events, they are like pre-init, init, load, control events, load complete, render, and unload. There are many other events available, but we are discussing the basic common events that we usually found in a page in ASP.NET. So the first one that is pre-init, as the name suggests, it's previous of initialization, means before initialization of anything. It raised after the start stage is complete, and before the initialization stage begins. So before initialization, it's that's why it is called pre-init. Okay. Now, what, uh, where we can use this event? We can use this event to check the post back property to determine whether this is the first time the page is being processed or it is already being processed. Means whenever the very first time your page will be loaded, it will return is post back property to false. And if it is already being loaded into the memory, it will say, yes, it is already there in the memory. So if you want to check we are coming or any user is coming to, uh, to that specific page at the very first time, you can check the is post, pro post back property in pre-init event. Okay, you can create or recreate dynamic, dynamic controls over here. You can set a master page dynamically in pre-init event. You can set a theme property dynamically, or you can read or set profile property values using this particular event. So this event is used for these specific tasks. Basically, whenever we are saying that it is going to be initialized and before actual initialization of page, we want to do some activities that we can do in pre-init event. The second event is init. After pre-init, the page will be initialized. So it is basically used when the controls have been initialized. Okay. So once all the controls have been initialized to their beginning stage, the init method will be called. This specific init event of individual control occurs before the init event of the page. Okay. Then we use this event. Why? For read or initialize control properties. Okay. You want to know that that if that what are the basic control properties of any specific control, say text box, say button. So you want to find out uh, the specific properties of those, those control and you want to initialize them with some specific value, you can do it in init event. The third event is the page, third page event is load event. Okay, this basically works when the page is loaded. The page object calls the onload method on a page object and then recursively does the same for each child control until the page and all controls are loaded. Okay, so it will call the onload method for the page and then for all the controls that are there in that specific page. Okay, what does load event do? The load event of individual control occurs after the load event of page. So first the load event of page will be called and after that the load event of individual controls will be called. Whatever the controls are there in that page, the load event will be called. We can use the onload event method to set properties in controls and to establish database connections. As we are saying that the controls properties are getting up or being initialized only after the onload event of the page. So we can set the properties in controls and we can even establish a database connections in onload method. Now what about control events? Controls do have their own events. Uh, like we are having a text box, it could have text change event. We have a button, it could have a click event and there are various events of various controls available. So to handle those specific events, we can use the control events of those specific uh, controls. 
Next is the render one. See, a render is automatically incorporates. It's basically how a control is going to be displayed uh, or going to be marked up to specific browser. Okay, so for that, a user control automatically incorporates the rendering. So you don't need to explicitly render the control in code, but they will automatically be happen there. This basically specifies how they will be visualized in a specific browser. Every server control have a render method. What you do, it basically write out the control markup to send to the browser, how it is going to be displayed on that specific page that is basically defined by the render event of that page. And then we have unload. Uh, it is basically raised for each control and then for the page. It is reverse of load. In load, what we have seen that on load will be called first for the page and then for the controls and in unload first the unload event of the controls will be called and then of the pages okay then in controls we use this event to do final cleanup like uh, you are closing a control specific database connections or any other cleanup event that you want to do you want to make them clean you want to make them clear that you can do in unload event for the page itself, we use this event to do final cleanup work, such as closing an open file and a database connection or finishing up the logging or other request specific tasks. So for all kind of cleanup tasks, you can do in this unload event. We have written a program over here. We are just seeing that what is the basic way of calling these different events. So you can see over here, we have called page pre init, then page init, then page init complete, and then page load. And whenever you will execute this program, you will see that pre init will be called first, then init will be called, then init complete will be called, and then load will be called. And its reverse will be happening in the same way. So guys, uh, this is enough for this video lecture. In coming video lectures, we are going to upload some more videos on ASP.net. So please like and subscribe for more. Thank you very much.